Greetings Monsterites, welcome to Voices of the Monsterhood. This is creating a living aquarium on a budget. This little series and updates can go into our monstrous creatures or monstrous organisms segment of the channel. So currently this tank is about six days since creation. Starting it out, I set aside some tap water and I left it to air out for about 24 hours. This is in order for the chlorine to evaporate, leaving for a safer water source, or environment in this case, for the organisms. Then I went and purchased this Java Fern, but it's not a regular Java Fern, it's a little bit of a fancier version called Windelov Java Fern. As you can see, the difference here is at the tops or at the ends of the leaves, they branch out into smaller leaves. And you can even see at the tips of the leaves, they branch out even more into tiny young leaflets. The gravel I purchased for only a dollar at the dollar store dollar tree if you are here in the United States Personally, I don't have too much trust for the gravel as it is dyed So I took the gravel into a bowl rinsing it thoroughly with water for at least five minutes Running my hands and fingers through the gravel rolling and rubbing it against itself to clear it of any residue Any paint dyes and other non-productive or even destructive elements that may be in there The fern was placed within the gravel which isn't ideal as I'd prefer to have placed it around a rock or you can even super glue it to a rock and place it underwater so that it is weighed down but I did place some gravel within the plant hoping that the roots will spread out under the thin layer of gravel I wouldn't advise this thin of a layer of gravel but we'll see how this works out as this is all in all an experimentation as well hopefully once the roots spread out I can remove some of the gravel that's holding the plant down in the middle of it as they're covering the tiny buds that are working their way out so you wouldn't want to do that a better way would be even to place the fern between two rocks and for a great underwater rock especially for this living ecosystem designed to keep itself healthy and alive you'd want to seek out a sort of porous rock like lava rock now what I found here is actually an iron slag which are basically the leftovers of iron extraction used to build tools and nails and such for processes such as for example laying out a railroad. Now my goal with this tank was mainly to keep possibly we will see on the size and how everything handles itself some snails such as mystery snails and other underwater freshwater snails. Now this being what I found to be an iron slag could be very detrimental to such creatures health as copper will kill your snails period. So once my pH tests arrive I will test out this meteorite looking iron slag in some water for several hours or days testing the pH level of the water. If you don't have the ability to pH test, I would avoid such quote-unquote rocks, as these slags do usually contain several types of metals, and metals not being ideal for underwater environments, I would simply avoid them. So we'll see how that pH test works out. The reason for choosing porous rocks such as this one appears to be, such as lava rocks, is because they're porous, and since they're porous, they have the ability to give shelter to microorganisms and bacteria that are are actually beneficial to the environment. And these bacteria are very important to such a self-maintaining ecosystem such as we're trying to create here, as well as just having fish in an aquarium with a filter and pump. The bacteria helps to break down wastes in the water, maintaining a healthy low ammonia balance. Now one more thing going back to the plant, this is again a Windelov Java Fern. And Java Ferns in general are very tough, strong, easy to keep underwater plants. You may have seen a little bit of motion in the water and that'll lead us to the next part. After about five days closely observing the plant and water levels, I gathered a bit of organics from a pond at a local park. So as you see I added some duckweed, which I'm a huge fan of just for the appearance of it laying out on top of the water. Now I gathered just a little bit of it and we'll see how fast it breeds, as in an ideal environment it will spread out quite fast. Also what duckweed can do is create a bit of shade to the rest of the tank, which in turn can decrease the amount of unwanted algae that grows on the bottom rocks and the sides of the aquarium. This shouldn't be too much of an issue later as I plan to have this tank in a bit less lit of an area, so we'll see how that'll work out. Right now it's located where it's exposed to the sun a pretty decent amount. Among the duckweed I also gathered a small amount of this pond water plant. I haven't checked 
on the specific name of this plant just yet. I placed two bits under the gravel and left one just to float around for now just to see if it will continue to grow and how it reacts to the environment and the, well, environment to it. As once I added these little plants and brought them back home in a semi-dry environment, they came with a lot of these little organisms, these little creatures attached to them. These little swimmers are not insects and they're not baby crawfish or crawdads called locally, which are sort of like small freshwater lobsters. Scuds or gamaris scuds are types of amphipods which are tiny little crustaceans. Gamaridae is the family, so they're usually referred to as scuds, S-C-U-D, and these are a nice little beneficial organism that will eat leftover waste from food as well as excrement left from snails and fish and they're just fun to watch. I first noticed them after I had already planted the new plants into the gravel and observed the tank. Swimming quickly about they stayed in the bottom areas by the gravel exploring little nooks and crannies throughout. Observing them for the next couple days, it seemed as though they had even groaned a little bit already, and they were even more active, not only swimming about the bottom, but going as high as the water's edge. By the way, if you maintain or plan on maintaining fish, these are a great food source for them, and keep in mind will also supply your fish with calcium. But again, if you want to maintain a healthy population of these little guys in your tank, put in some rocks, preferably some porous type rocks, where these little organisms can hide and take shelter in. Now, we mentioned calcium, and calcium is an important part of these types of ecosystems, especially since, well, we already have crustaceans in there, but I'm looking to add in larger mollusks, much, much larger snails than these little creatures. And in order for your snails to stay healthy and strong, their shells to stay strong and vibrant, they need a good source and supply of calcium. And an affordable, very easy way to do this is by taking eggshells from chicken eggs that you may enjoy for breakfast, taking those shells, cleaning them out as much as possible as well as from that inner film that lines the inside wall of the egg. Now some of that film, since it is composed of some proteins, can be left behind but not too much. The eggshells can then be broken down into tiny pieces or even using a mortar and pestle into a powder fine level. Though for here I don't really need that, so I just broke it down to these smaller bits so that I can also easier see it and clean it up if I wish to do so. And as you've noticed I have no filter and no air pump going into this tank. Once you sprinkle some of that good old calcium, that eggshell, it will float to the bottom where the little crustaceans, the scuds and snails, will go upon and actually feed on it. Now other calcium supplementation you can also use for your aquarium are cuttlefish bones, which are sold in pet stores for birds to chew on. You can break those down and place them in the water, though they'll be a little bit more expensive, obviously, than chicken eggs from your local grocery store. And you can also use calcium pills in the United States called called Tums, and you can drop one or a bit of that pill underwater, and your calcium-loving creatures will feed on that as well. And Tums are actually chewable calcium pills provided for people. So that's about everything that has happened in these first six days, and oh, I almost forgot. We have another known visitor that we can actually see, which are these small freshwater pond snails. So we already have our first dose of snails. They don't grow very big, they're not as interesting as the ones we will place in later, but but they will certainly help in our experimentation and test of the balance of this ecosystem as the organisms provide carbon dioxide for our plants and our plants provide oxygen for the organisms. May it be noted that at this point I haven't removed any water yet other than what has evaporated, which is about an inch from the top, so a decent amount, and that has just been added back prior to filming this video. I'll probably be closely observing this tank for another week before I remove any water and waste and unwanted things. I hope you enjoyed this little segment of creating an ecosystem on your own on a small budget and I do hope it inspired you if not to create your own such living aquarium then at least to develop an interest in further observing how this will all transpire. If all goes well here I'm looking to add two to possibly three more different types of plants, some rocks and then finally the royal guests that will become the royal hosts, the snails. Oh and an important announcement to you monsterites out there. We are running another challenge. We're going to be running a challenge every month, hosted by our own Donde, Donde of the Monsterhood. This month's challenge is going to be your own kaiju, an original kaiju creation. Last month it was the eye monster, something to do with eye or eyes, and this month it's going to be a challenge of creating your own unique 
Kaiju. At the end of the month, once again, we'll be reviewing your creations, most likely also in our last monster cast of the month, voicing our opinions and voicing which are our favorites and why. These creations can be anything. They can be paintings, drawings, songs, literature, anything created by you. Thank you and stay monstrous, my friends. And if you have any suggestions, recommendations, ideas on how to make this tank even better or what I could do better, please, please comment down below.